are there ever any experiences where you guys thought you were going to die or just crazy experiences like that? I don't think so. Not me personally. <laughs> That's um, a really weird question. Uh, that's a weird question. No, I like it. <laughs> I never got asked that question. Like, so you mean like literally? Like, like literally, we were like, you're so life. gonna die. No. Wow. Well, you know, actually, we've done some couple well, a couple years ago. We've been in, we've been in some really bad snowstorms where we where we have like kind of like been, you know pretty much you're at the mercy of wherever this ice is taking you right now. <laughs> but I didn't think I was gonna die. When mm-hmm. I, you know, I thought maybe we might, no. the van might fall on the side. But like I didn't. I, I mean, fortunately. So, with this band, yeah. we, haven't, we haven't been in any life-threatening situations yet, so... I know, seriously. Not I don't plan on ever being in any in playing music, so... What, what about some crazy shit, though? Like, I mean, yeah, you yeah. see some... Really I mean, yeah, crazy you, you know, we, we play some really dangerous areas. We were just in Portland, and it was like... We were the only people that weren't on crack. I saw some, <laughs> I saw some crazy stuff in Detroit. Not long ago. <laughs> yeah. Um, what happened in Detroit? That wasn't dangerous though. It was just really disturbing. It was uh, it was one man. <laughs> this is on the road. This is one man uh, performing a sexual favor uh, to another man. Oh wow! Uh, underneath the trench coat, both on the homeless. side of the street, both homeless, against an abandoned. In daylight, in the middle of the day, as we drove by. On a main road. This is about a mile away from where we played. That's pretty crazy. I I died on the inside. I prefer not to see that. Okay. That's just everyday Hollywood for me. Like, you know, I think we die every day on the inside a little bit. <laughs> but, uh, nothing external. So. <laughs> this girl we were off dinner with the other night ate some pretty gnarly chicken, I'm pretty sure. No, she, she just wanted attention. She, she wanted to die, yeah. She was just trying to get out of the belt. Yeah. <laughs> wait, wait. Sorry. What happened? She ate chicken and... Yeah. Yeah. She ate some She needed to be chicken. kind of in the center of everything. She needed mm-hmm. to be where, where, where things were happening. Like, she wanted all eyes on her. So she was like, I had some bad chicken before. I feel really sick, but first I'm gonna have like seven drinks, um, and and use your guys' money, and then leave like a quarter of what I owe, and then go. Oh, I have to throw up. I gotta go. Bye. Crazy. Yeah, she was uncool. Not a good person. Damn. That was. I died on the inside that day. Yeah. I mean, that's just. That's insane. Have you guys been overseas? I think. Yep. United Kingdom. Oh, that's right. A couple times now, probably like half a dozen, seven times already. How does that differ from the states? Well, I think it's a lot different. It's a lot different, yeah. I mean, yeah. Every, the culture and the food. And, uh, it's refreshing, though. I like doing it. It changes things up, and I'd like to keep like, uh, extending on that and keep going far, further and further. What's your take on this? Is your first time over there? My, I, I, think, I think it's a lot of things are different and also very similar. You know, it's like it's very different culturally, but at the same time, it's still, English, it's yeah. still dudes on stage playing music and kids responding to music at a very core level. It's like, mm. you know, you, ultimately the scene's different. If you're in London and you're eating different food and people act a little differently, but you go to a show and sometimes it's very easy to lose yourself in music and think you're in St. Louis and not in Glasgow, Scotland, or something. You know what I mean? Like. I don't yeah. know if that makes sense. Well, but, uh, yeah. you, you lost me at St. Louis, but I know you were. You know what I'm saying? That it's a lot of things are very different, but you find there's similarities in a lot of these different, you know, cities and cultures. I think. So, um, Do you find that they're more accepting in other countries? I think they're. I mean, probably a little more. They show maybe like a little bit more enthusiasm because you don't. You're not from there, and it's special. And it's oh. not New York City, it's not Philadelphia or LA where it's like, I know I'm going to see this band. I don't take it for granted. They don't take, they seem to not take American music for granted too much over there. Mm-hmm. So I think that's a positive thing for us. That's, that's cool. We don't Dude. go there a lot, you know, they're like maybe like once every year or two, mm-hmm. whatever. So, well, about every year. They're a bit rowdier over there. A little bit rowdier, they drink a little more. They drink a little more. Yeah. <laughs> they buy it's a little more more culturally time. acceptable to be like, just ever, just. Some people are just a mess over there. Like you go there, it's just like you know, you see vomit everywhere, and it's not really like that in America. Like there, it's acceptable to like pass out in the venue, right? And just like this for three hours with like puke on you, and like your friends just going <laughs> like it's funny to them. Where it's yeah. like here, it's a little sad, a little more shocking. I think mm-hmm. like not people will really accept that. Like, you get kicked out of the club, probably. Yeah. So. But dude, I was reading this interview um, on Pace Punk that you did. And you, uh, this was, I don't even know when an interview was done, man. But uh, I think, I'm pretty sure this was a quote from you. And you, you quoted, or you, you mentioned the Howard Zinn, oh, yeah. uh, People's History of the United People's States. History of the United States. Dude, America. such a good book, know, man. Very eye opening. Yeah, yeah, you guys all read it? I, I haven't read Dude. it. I think you got it right. Wait, are you talking about yesterday? 
No, no, that was a coincidence. It's all about yeah, I, I brought that yesterday. book up in an interview yesterday. Did you? Yeah. That's what I thought. Maybe it was yesterday. Yeah, it's very eye opening. Holy shit. It's, it's, it's the not high school, it's the not uh, American approved textbooks. Yeah. It's the real history of America. It's not the history where you're, where, where we hugged the Indians. It's more about where we, yeah. we were killing everything we could kill. And, you know, it's dark, man. You just, I would suggest that if you don't, if you, for anyone to read it who wants a different, more organic perspective of how America was founded. I thought it was crazy that you guys actually mentioned that because, like, I, you don't really meet too many people who, who know about Howard Zinn, like kids. Yeah, yeah. Things, you know? right. I try and, you know, culture myself and not just take for granted that uh, we are such a, an amazing, giving country. You know? yeah. like, there's some yeah. really dark things that has always been going on that continues to go on, and mm -hmm. I like and I like to get my information from the people that didn't, you know, the the people that maybe aren't patriots, yeah, you know, who don't have feelings of just like this blind patriotism that I think is really dangerous. Mm -hmm. It's definitely an eye-opening book, eye-opening perspective. Yeah, for long, sure. It's really long. I know, like yeah. 700 pages. Yeah. Yep. Do you guys, uh, do you guys know Noam Chomsky? Yeah. Like, do you, do you read that stuff as well? Or? I haven't, I know about it. Dude, seriously. Yeah. Noam Chomsky is a professor at MIT, and right. it's, it's very similar along the lines, yeah. as far as um, just his perspective on things. And yeah. Did, Totally, highly recommended. There's another author, uh, Corn Cornell West. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of Cornell West? Mm, I haven't and read. I, yeah, my friend actually out in LA was. It's kind of similar, you know, alternative perspectives on mm -hmm. social interaction. Definitely. Like, does that play an effect in your music at all? Sure. I mean, I like to. I like to not any code things. I have. I have opinions that are a lot more. I think radical than what like you would see on Fox Five or whatever like that. Like I like you know see what's going on on the outside. You know, look at it from a different perspective. Like, yeah. Do I hate mainstream media? Just it's ridiculous. Like, do you terrible. They can con they will convince if you don't have a hunger for knowledge or like the truth. Mm -hmm. They can tell you anything, and you just go, oh okay, yeah, okay, yeah. Where's my flag? Like. You know, it's it's really scary, man. But that's just the way it's always been, and I feel like, you know, if things stay like this. It's just going to keep being this way, and you have to learn find peace within yourself and just mm -hmm. ride the ride this crazy way that we're on. You know, I think it's funny how like a lot of that relates to the public relations industry, and I think it ties directly in with the music industry and like public relations. Do you think that the public relations industry and how PR works? Do you think that it drives successful bands? Um, well, yes and no. I mean, if, like if you're talking about public relations in the sense of like uh, what, what some of us might refer to as like a hype machine, mm -hmm. um, you see a lot of bands go through the quote unquote hype machine, and they they're on they're everywhere. They're on Saturday Night Live. They're on this show and that show, and on this you know the cover of that magazine, and on all the cool blogs. And then if you fast forward a year, you, they might be disbanded or doing nothing of interest mm -hmm. um, and I think that within the music industry for bands it's better to have a long-term career and sort of have that organic um, pr you know or organic sort of hype and press and following as opposed to like yes public relations can drive a band yes they can blow up a band it's proven I see it all the time but I don't necessarily think that it's in a positive way if you want a career you need more than public relations you know, you need, there has to be a foundation underneath that because there will be a time for 99.999999% of bands to hit it big where people stop caring and, and all those suits and all those people, they go away and they don't care anymore. But if you have a strong foundation, you can keep doing it the way that you want to be doing it, you know? I mean, like, bands like U2 are the exception. I, it's just like... It's important to remain above too. the radar, you know? I mean, you can't be like... You can't be completely underground and ignorant of like s spreading the message and building the brand of your band, mm -hmm. but um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know if it's uh, if it all. It sh at the end of the day, it should come down to the music, you know, for sure. But that leads to again people being pulled into life, and it's a force-fed thing, and like people don't have enough willpower to go to be like, I want to judge this for myself instead of saying, this person said it was good and I should listen to it. And then you have this preconceived notion of like, okay, I'm supposed to like this before you listen to it. 
you know. I think mean, I think it's kind of like uh, you know, independent film or something where a film is made for like ten thousand dollars or a million dollars even. It, it might be mind blowing script and amazing acting and great score and like this awesome film, but ultimately it's gonna take kind of getting to this film festival, spreading the word and getting it out to a wider audience before it's actually recognized. Most you know, people aren't seeking out, they're waiting to be to have it given to them. Mm-hmm. So that's why I think the PR is so beneficial for a lot of those kind of bands that are out right now because people aren't, you know, it's it's tough, tough to get someone to, to use their own mind and seek things out for what they really want to hear yeah. and watch and see. So I guess to sort of make sense of all that, I mean, like, helpful, yes, and all be all, no, I don't think. You know, it's funny, I, I find that generally with the most successful bands, or the bands that have a long-lasting impact on, like, the scene or, or generations down the road, I find that those are the bands that, that generally have very strong DIY ethics, and they're, they're just, they're far from public relations, like Fugazi. Or, or a band like that, you know, they're, they're, it was, it's all about like the moment and that message at that time, yeah. and I think it resonates yeah. throughout time. I just think those things are helpful, but I just don't. I think our approach is we don't rely on bigger machines because I, it's tough to trust a machine. You know what I mean? So like, it's good to have it, but that shouldn't be the end all be all for you as a band. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're here talking to you, so I mean, like. That in a, in a way is like us, you know, sharing you know some of our feelings and our beliefs about the music and talking about the band and our shows and our albums and stuff. Mm-hmm. And of course, we love doing that. So, but yeah, then some of those bands that played to five thousand people one day, and then six months later they played to five people. So nobody wants to be that band. <laughs> yeah. Generally, they would have broken up by the time that happens. Too. That's a big thing. Again, that brings into the, the foundation. Being you a know, victim of the hype machine. Going from three buses to a van. Usually you're gonna break up before that happens. That's crazy. Because you know, there's no foundation, there's no like real drive behind it. You're relying on the machine. So mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that's just I mean that's it's true. It's crazy to see like bands come out of nowhere and like just you know, they're on the cover of every magazine and then all of a sudden, you know, the the public opinion changes. And then everybody's like onto something else. I don't think anyone ever wants to see that as in, you know, like that, you know, what's next? Okay, it's a reality show for you, so now we can look at your ironic life. You know what I mean? Like, I have no interest in any of that at all, like, mm-hmm. ever happening. You know what I mean? Like, that's like the worst thing that could happen right now, I think. And some people actually, they just, they just need the attention. They'll just take the reality shows and, you know. Do you come across bands that, that thrive on wanting to be a product of PR that want to just be famous? Sure. Yeah, sure. absolutely. More times than not, probably. It's yeah. usually the younger ones who don't know any better. Yeah. Like an 18, 19 year old. You can see them. You can see them a mile away. You see the haircut, you see the clothes, and you just know that they're trying to be the guy on the cover of the magazine that they read at that time. I, I almost don't even fault these kids, though. Like, I understand why, yeah. how you can get wrapped up in that. It seems like, you know, it's portrayed as such a glamorous, amazing thing. And, like, I could see how a 17 year old kid would want to, like, have that instant hit, you know, and go from yeah. playing to 10 people to playing to 10,000 overnight. I get that, you know. I just think that they don't think about the other side, which is like, that it seem like it comes back down only really in America. Their vision is that kind of short. Sure, yeah. yeah, like, this America sees down the road. Right. Dream, this American dream kind of thing. Right. And it's it's very exclusive to America. I mean, obviously, there's, there's yeah. a lot of stuff in the UK, but yeah. at the end of the day, United Kingdom and America are very similar compared to the rest of the world. And like you don't see these other countries with these people just like pouring themselves out for five seconds on a freaking show. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like it's like it, you can't blame those kids. They've been forced this idea of like you're gonna make it, you're a fucking star. Like you know, yeah. like, it's a delusion. It's At delusion. least for five minutes of fame. They'll do anything for five minutes, man. But it's just like it's so sad. It's like it's, these bands that take reality shows just who don't even have you know really have a fan base just to like. We're on TV, like, this is, you know, yeah, sure, you're going to learn about my entire life and you get to see, like, all my shortcomings and I'm pretty much selling my soul to the corporation, letting them edit my life and put it onto a screen. You know, it's really, that's, that's what, that's the kind of place that we are in. Mm-hmm. People are trained to think that you know, you've got to make it. That is the American dream. Chase, chase the American dream. Mm-hmm. 
you're talking about this dream and this this perception of of like almost like a, a rock star illusion that these kids are fed. Um, what do you think would change that, or is there a way to change that? Well, I don't think so. It seems like America's always been the land of opportunity. That's how the whole this country is pitched. That's how this country is pitched. Things. It's like this is the land of opportunity. Yeah. This is where you can make all your wildest dreams and fantasies come true, and you can make endless amounts of money. You don't hear that. I think some bands also, you know, take they can take it upon themselves to to sell that notion. Like a band like Radiohead or something like. They're phenomenally successful and always, always putting out amazing stuff musically and artistically. And everything they touch is like gold to me. Like we talk all the time. Like they have put out a bad product in, in forever. You know, and like it's. I think it's the higher you get, the more successful you get. It's more responsibility to like kind of dispel that notion. It's also it's also more tempting to quote unquote sell out too. You know, to keep to keep it going, to keep chasing the dragon. You know. I think there's good. Yeah, I think there's two sides of it. I think yeah. that there's like a real musical side, and there's like a real pop culture side. I mean, of, of music. I mean, there, there's music like Radiohead and Wilco and these bands who probably pay zero attention to what's going on in the world. Or, you know, I mean, not zero attention, but I mean in the pop world, the really insignificant things, mm-hmm. not important social consciousness things. But uh, and then you have younger sort of these kids with the false notions of. Um, rock star fame and stuff and I think that that's a different I think that it's split at a certain point of the people who are really really music heads and into music mm-hmm. and then there's those people who are just into the popular culture it shows in the songs surrounding yeah. music it shows in the songs the songs are not timeless and um, so it becomes more about not the song mm-hmm. it becomes more about staying on TV and staying in the public eye and the song will take a back seat to it and hopefully you're mediocre, you're just mediocre enough where you'll keep selling a million records. I think that's definitely more positive, the fact that the labels are kind of crumbling, like they're not throwing out these huge chunks of, chunks of money to the, you know, the young fans. It's, it's like really good that kind of weeding out, hopefully it's weeding out a lot of the really good theory. and passion, mm-hmm. yeah, to make good art. Really. Well, I think we're good on time, I like how much? 32. Thirty-two. Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad you guys came out. Yeah. Cool. You guys are. You guys are fun. Yeah. As you can tell, I did not prepare. <laughs> no, no. I thought it was me. You had the nachos ready. All right. Well, <laughs> the nachos were the illusion, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sure. Go for it. Dude, you look so stoned. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'll come. Yeah. I'll come call it out in the interview. I knew it. He just goes. I knew it. Yep. Those eyes. No lies. I'm not this guy. I never tell lies. Yeah.